Hey, good morning everyone. Welcome to Sew Together Tuesday. I'm Teresa Coates. I'm the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics. I'm really excited that you've joined us again today. Today's project, we're going to be working on a self-binding blanket. So you may have made a self-binding blanket before. There are lots of tutorials out there. Um, most of the other tutorials work with a flannel or cotton fabrics, and today we're going to do it with our Cuddle Minky fabric, which is super exciting. Um, we have it, we're going to combine it actually with the Embrace and with the Cuddle. So um, we're going to be working with the two. We're going to be um, going over some of the things that we did before, but if you haven't watched our previous videos, last week we talked about the Embrace Double Gauze, and then a couple of weeks ago we did a bunch of tips on working with the Cuddle Minky. So if you haven't seen those, I definitely recommend you go back and watch them. You can find them on our Facebook page um, or on our YouTube site. You can find them either places and I recommend that you watch them if you miss them at all, okay? So today the project, is, like I said, it's really easy. I'm excited to show it to you because it's really just you're sewing your corners, flipping it, and then doing some top stitching. So when I say it's easy, it's super duper easy. Um, and it's a really great one because you can do it in all sorts of sizes. So we have a pattern for this. It's available on our website. Uh, the website is shannonfabrics.com. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see um, like a little link for free patterns. And you can just click on there. And we have this pattern and dozens of other patterns that you can find. Um, so this pattern is for the self-binding blanket and the lovey. So we're going to do the actual the lovey size today, which is a smaller one. It finishes at 17 inches, so it's um, a little bit easier to work with here in the studio so that I can show you how to do it and be able to, for you to see all the steps with me. Okay, but in the, in the um, pattern, it's, there's that pattern and also one that finishes at 36 inches. So it has a nice big blanket and then two smaller loveys that you can make out of the yardage that we um, tell you on the pattern. So anyway, you can find that pattern um, afterward. You can find it at shannonfabrics.com and I hope that you'll, you'll go download that pattern and you can use it again and again and again. So today we're going to do the lovey. I've got my fabric here. I've pre-cut it. So if you haven't, um, like I said, if you haven't learned how to cut the fabrics, definitely go back and watch those videos because I've already cut them here and so we're not going to go over it one more time. Um, but I've got them pre-cut. So what I've got here is I have the Embrace Double Gauze. And I have um, this cute little sewing themed one that I really like. And then Lux Cuddle in the Midnight Blue. So this is our Lux Cuddle Rose in Midnight Blue. And then I have this cute Catacorn. And I'm gonna show you how you can use both of them. And I'll give you a few different uh, examples to show you how it turns out because it really, it, it's such a flexible project that you can do it with anything. And I really like how it turns out with the different fabrics. So I'll have some samples for you later. Um, so I also have the Clover Pins that you know I love. The uh, stretch needles, so these are Schmetz 9014 stretch needles, which um, you'll need to have whenever you're working with the Cuddle Minky. We have superior threads, they're so fine. This is just a polyester thread that I really like. It's a 50 weight, so it's thinner and um, super duper strong. So we're gonna use that today and we're gonna use that. We're gonna use the gray thread actually in everything that we make. So whether I use the blue or red or purple is all gonna have the gray thread. What I love about that is that it just hides in the, in the fabric so easily that it doesn't matter that you use the same color thread for all of them. It's just gonna sink right into that, that nice pile. Okay, so then we have the Ulfa Cutter. And this is the uh, this is their artist artist knife, I believe they call it. Um, I just call it a craft knife, but it's the same sort of same uh, thing that you would see in lots of different art stores. It has such a nice fine point, and that's really why I love it. So this is what I use to cut my Lux Cuddle, okay? And then I have um, my rotary cutter, which is what I use to cut the Cuddle, and also for the double gauze. I've got my stiletto, which I'll use to pull some of the fibers out of the, of the seams when I'm doing that. And then I use my marker to mark all of my squares before I pre-cut them, or before, yeah, before I pre-cut them for you here. And then um, also I'll use it when I'm marking the fabric for this project, okay? So these are the tools that I've got. Let's get started. We'll, uh, we'll start making a blanket. All right, so we're gonna start with the backing fabric, which in this case is this Lux Cuddle. Okay, you can use a cuddle three, just a regular cuddle for this project if you want for the back. I like the way that the Lux cuddle looks, so I'm gonna use that. And I almost always do. I like that the way that it um, it hides the um, it hides my stitches in the Lux cuddle, which I appreciate because I'm not always doing it right. Okay. So I've got my ruler today, and I'm going to, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mark our corner. So for this one, we have a, we're gonna do a uh, two inch border. I think in the pattern, it tells you an inch and a half. Personally, I like two inches, so we're just gonna do that today. Uh, 
The nice thing about this pattern is that it really is super flexible. So if you want to do this in a larger size, you can totally do that. You could do it with a three inch border, a two inch border, whatever size you want to. Okay, so I'm just gonna go along here and I'm gonna mark two inches from the edge so you can see I've lined up the raw edge with the two inch line in here. And then I'm just gonna come over here and mark that line. And I'm gonna do that on all four corners. Okay, when you're doing this, it's important that you can get it uh, out flat so make sure that you've got a board that you can get it out there with okay mark these and you can see I'm not marking these all the way to the edge because this is really just uh, a guideline for me so I like to do it so that my lines don't go to the edge and then I don't get confused here's another one I've used for something before um, all right so my two inch edge goes right along that raw edge to get it as straight as possible draw that line and I'm gonna come back over and just keep doing this okay we're gonna mark all of these corners the two inches that is how big my border is going to be so when it comes over it's gonna be a two inch border okay so when you're doing a larger quilt say or a larger blanket say you wanted to do one that was 45 inches you might do a three inch border instead because that would be nicer proportionally Okay, so once I've got all of these on there, then I'm going to go and I'm gonna mark my corner. Okay, so I'm gonna get this and I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna find the 45 on here. Okay, so my 45 is right here and right here. Okay, these bump right up to the edge. There are a few rulers that these will intersect at the corner and that makes it actually super nice. But this one, they intersect a quarter of an inch out, which works really well for most quilting. So we're not gonna be able to do it quite as easily, but we can still do it. So what we're doing is I'm gonna take this line right here and I am gonna match it with this line that I drew. Okay, and I'm just gonna shove it over until it's in the right place where it intersects right here. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm making sure that this line matches. Don't worry about this one because it's not going to. All right, I'm gonna stick that on there to hold it in place. Just gonna draw the line. So you can see how it intersects here at that corner. That's what we want so that we can get our 45. Sometimes this gets confusing people and they're not sure which way the ruler goes. Always put it on there so that your corner is gonna come off. Because in the end, that's what we're gonna do is make that corner come off. So you're just gonna measure it and uh, align your ruler so that it's gonna take that corner off. So every time I just stick it on there, I put my ruler on, and then I'm gonna find the line. Okay, and then I just try to line it up as well as possible. That's my little magnet holding it down. We're just gonna work our way around. So we're gonna do this on all four corners. And this is the first step. Just to get these all marked and so this is going to be my sewing line and so you can see that i mark it from edge to edge because this is the one i'm going to sew on it's the one i want to take note of the other one isn't as important and i don't want to i don't want to get distracted by it like i am with that line there okay that's what happens when you don't use all your fabric in one project okay so now i've got all my corners marked Okay, so now I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna lay it right sides up, okay, and I'm going to fold down the corner. Okay, and actually I wanna fold it this direction. Um, and the reason I wanna fold it this way is because I wanna pin it from this side, okay? So I'm gonna pin it from this side so that my pins are here and I'm gonna sew it from the raw edge over to the fold. The reason we want to do that is so that when we stitch, if this starts to shove just a little bit, we'll have already started it here and it's gonna, it's gonna shove toward the corner and the corner will be slightly off over here. That's fine. We just don't want this to get shoved off. So if we start over here and we pushed over and it got off kilter, you would totally notice it. So just take my word for it. You want to start sewing on the raw edge. So I'm gonna match these up as well as I can. And then I'm just gonna pin it and I'm gonna pin it right on either side of that line okay so what i want to do is pin it so that i can stitch along here and not have to take my pins out until i'm either done or almost done so this one i might take out because it'll roll over it but otherwise i could leave it in there because i'm not going to stitch on the pin okay so i'm going to do this with all four corners and i'm just going to line it up and then pin it on either side 
Okay, and it's really important that when you're holding this, you just hold it nice and tight and make sure that it's not moving when you're pinning it. Okay, um, if you're a quilter, you've probably done that trick before where you make sure that your, your um, seams are gonna match by flipping it over like that. You can see that works pretty well. It's not as important with the cuddle. You want it to be close, but if it's not perfect, it's all right. Sometimes we draw those lines a little bit crooked. That's no biggie. Okay, so I'm gonna pin that, and I've got one more that I'm gonna bring over. So we're always making that dog ear go out that direction. Okay. And then I'm just gonna hold it and pin it. Okay, we're gonna sew all of these and then I'll check them and make sure that they're right before I take these off. So sometimes I've seen people wanna cut these off and then sew it together. I'm always a little bit worried that somehow I'm gonna mess it up. So I don't wanna do that. Okay, so let's take this over to the sewing machine and uh, we'll take it over to the sewing machine. I'll sew it up for you and I'll show you how we do that part. Okay, so we'll wake my machine up and get that going. All right, so I've got it set right now on a straight stitch. So we've got it on the straight stitch. Move it up to a 3.5 millimeter. I'm working on the baby lock today. Um, this is the crescendo, and I'm gonna be using this one. This one has a digital dual feed, um, which is nice. It has like a little belt there, which works out great. Okay, so I'm gonna start this. You can see I start in just the tiniest bit there. I don't always. I'll show you a different way of doing it. I'm gonna back up just a little, and then I'm gonna sew forward. Take that out. I'm gonna sew, and then I'll back stitch, and then cut my thread. Okay, I'm gonna bring the next one up. Okay, so the other thing that you can do if you're having a hard time getting these edges to match, and especially if you're doing this with Cuddle 3, it's important to get those edges to match. So I just put my needle down, and then I bump my line up to my needle, put the foot down, come on, there we go. And then I'm gonna sew in, and then back stitch, and then I'm gonna sew off the other side. Put my thread again. Okay. So either way that you want to do it is fine. Like I said, if you're using the Cuddle 3, which is the flatter one, it's um, better in my opinion to make sure that it's matching up to the to the needle before you start sewing. Otherwise, I just sew in a little and then I back stitch. And then I'm gonna come right off. Okay, and then we got one more. That in there. I work that, get that nice and flat. Right. Okay, I'm gonna put that in there. Put my foot down. And back stitch. And so right off the end. And you can see I'm staying pretty close on that line. I try really hard. If it messes up, it's fine. Okay. So then we're gonna take this back over. Okay, so I'm going to take my pins out here and check all of the corners to see if they worked. All right, okay, so here I've got all of my corners are all still dog-eared and have my little tails and I'm just going to check them and see if I turn them out, does this lay flat? Because that's what the end goal. Okay, what's been known to happen sometimes is that people will sew this line. If you do that and then you're like, oh darn it, what you can do is don't bother taking those stitches out, just come back over and sew this and then when you trim your seam allowance, you'll just cut that off and it'll be fine. Okay, so we're just gonna turn that out. We can see that's what we're gonna become. Okay, so when I do that, these corners lay flat. If you, if you do this on, on the wrong line, what will happen is this will stand up straight. Okay, so if it's laying anywhere near this flat, you're good to go. We're just gonna take this out. Okay, and I'm gonna trim these off. So I don't really measure them, it's about a half an inch, but I just cut them off. Okay, I have noticed that you wanna cut them around a half an inch though, not really short, like you don't, even though it won't fray, you don't wanna do like an eighth inch seam because what will happen is that it will roll inside and um, then you end up with like a little, um, I don't know, a little edge in there that you can feel that is uh, not as nice. Okay, so we're just going to cut those off. 
Okay, and then I'm going to turn all of these corners back out. Okay, I'm going to poke them out with my fingers. Works perfectly fine. All right, so um, now we've got that taken care of. Okay, so I've got all four of those corners done. So let me see if I can get it. I don't think I can get so you can see the whole thing. But the whole thing is done. So we have all four corners out and now I've got it flat on my board. Um, one of the reasons that I like doing this size is because I can get the whole thing out on the board. So I really, I recommend if you haven't done one of these before that you definitely start with a smaller size just because you can get it all out and you can lay it flat and figure out how it works. And then you can um, figure out any sort of ways that you need to like, you know, manipulate things to make the larger one. Okay, so I've got two, fa two fabrics here basically. Um, so this is just a piece of the embrace, okay? So just a piece that I've cut right along the lines. And this is a piece that I've taken and I surged it to some white. The difference with this is purely personal. So if you like it one way or the other, it's totally fine. It makes no difference, okay? So if I put this in here and I were to tuck it under, I'm just gonna tuck it under a little so you can see how this works. We're gonna put this under. Da, da, da. They get it all nice and flat. And you can see that the blue behind it will sort of, um, I don't know what the right word is. I wanna say cast a shadow and that's not quite right. But you can sort of see the darkness behind it, which is fine and that may be absolutely what you love. I really prefer it when I do the white behind it and it makes it just really pop. Okay, it keeps the white really nice and bright. So if you wanna do that, you just need to cut a piece of the white gauze out, the same exact size. Um, so I always press my gauze first and then I stick it in here. Um, so what I did is I pressed them both and then I surged them together. So you can see that that is a little bit brighter. So it really is, it's just personal taste. So whatever you like, whatever you prefer, that's what you get to do. Um, there's no hard and fast rules with this. Like I said, you could put cotton inside here. You can put um, novelty cottons, you could put flannel, you can do, I've done um, like orphan blocks before that I've totally started a quilt and then I just didn't want to finish it. Um, and I've been able to put those in the middle and I've just quilted them a little bit and stuck them inside and top stitch it down the exact same way. So it's a really, it's a flexible, flexible pattern. Okay, so once we've gotten it to this point, I'm going to pin my corners and then I'm gonna pin my edges, okay? So I would do this so that I can keep everything where I want it to be. So uh, we talked about before that we want to make sure and keep, keep things where they're supposed to be. Um, and we do that with pins. Okay, so I'm gonna check this, make sure I've got enough caught under there. Yep, okay, I'm gonna shove this all over. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pin these sides as well. When you're doing a smaller one, or especially if you're doing a larger one, um, it can be hard to make sure that this is the right width. So you remember we cut it at two inches, which means the fold should be at two inches. So here's my cut line, here's my fold like, and I can feel that that's about right. So I'm gonna pin there and make sure it stays there, okay? And I can do that on all the sides and just make sure really quick that it's in the right position. When you're doing a blanket like this and it's, you know, if you did it like the full width of the cuddle fabric, you could end up with a blanket that was like maybe 54 inches, uh, which is wide. And so that will end up sort of bending along that top and it's harder to get it straight. So just measure it a couple of times as you go, put a couple pins in there and then pin in between, okay? So we're just gonna pin these down and then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna pin it one more time along the edge. So what I'm doing is I'm just pinning maybe a quarter of an inch from the raw edge and I'm pinning through all of the layers. You can't really see it. And this is why we deal with the long pins. This is why I like them best for this fabric is because the fabric can be really fluffy. Uh, and so it ends up hiding the pins that don't have, don't have big heads in there. Okay, and I can tell you it's happened to me numerous times. Um, one of the things too, you can see the way that I'm pinning is um, in the same direction. Okay, so if you are right-handed, if you put the, the blanket like this and you pin this direction, it makes it really nice and easy, okay? So if I pin this way, I'm sliding it this direction. If I were left-handed, I would want to be pinning down here and I could pin this way, okay? Um, but if you're right-handed, pin further away from you and it'll be a little bit easier. 
Okay, so then I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to pin some of these down. This doesn't want to wiggle too much, so I don't need to put a ton of pins in there, but I do need to put some. So I'm going to use up my entire little pin cushion here, I'm sure. Okay, as I go around here and get this all pinned nice and flat so that when I'm sewing it, it's not going to move on me. Okay, if you're doing a large blanket, um, I suggest that you pin the corners and the sides and then you go back and you pin one side and sew it and then come back and then repin the next side and sew it and then do the same thing. So you're sewing one side at a time. If you try to sew, like if you're doing like the 54 inch blanket and you're trying to pin 50 inches on each side of the blanket, you're going to completely run out of pins and you're going to have a huge um, yeah, a lot of stabby stuff in your lap while you're sewing. So I suggest just one side at a time if you're doing the big stuff. Okay, so now we've got all of it pinned. So you can see I've got pins all the way around it. We're gonna go over and sew this. Okay, so I'm gonna reset my machine to a zigzag stitch with five wide and five long. Okay, this seems really, really big um, until you sew on it and then it's okay. Um, and you'll realize that it works just fine with the cuddle. Okay, so what I've done here is I've got it lined up so that it's going to go just on the edge of my foot. And I'm going to run it so that the raw edge goes right down this part of my foot. Okay, and I can sort of see it here. If I'm having trouble see it, I can always use this stiletto to sort of push it out of the way as I go. Okay, so I'm going to get that to try. All right. All right, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna take these pins out as I go because I wanna make sure I'm not stitching over them. Okay, so, so right here I can push this back and I can hold this back with my stiletto and I can see where that edge is gonna be and I can sew it. Um, you can also, what I like to call blind sewing, where I just sort of eyeball it and then I just go for it. And it seems to work okay. So I use a zigzag on this. You can also use a serpentine around the edge and I'll show you another one that does that. Uh, with the Lux Cuddles, I prefer to do the zigzag myself just because I think it's easier to keep it, um, to keep it along the edge and to not have to worry too much about the edge flipping up. Because it's a knit, we wanna catch all this edge down. And I found that when I do a serpentine, I'll have some edges that fluff up more. With the zigzag, I don't. But really, this is another one of those places where, you know, it's about what works well for you. So if you like the serpentine and that's what you want to do, please do. There's no reason why you shouldn't. Um, it's just not what I, what I do. Okay, so I'm just going to obviously needle down, rotate it, and pivot around that corner, and I'm going to keep going. Okay. And you can see this edge, and I just sort of keep an eye on it and see where it's going and make sure it's heading toward what I want it to go to, which is this edge of the foot over here. And I can see that, um, like I said, this is the baby lock and it has a really nice wide walking foot, which I like a lot. Okay, the other thing with this stiletto is you can see I can hold it and I can hold it nice and flat and sort of taut as I'm sewing to bring it around. Feed that under there. Do another corner. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna keep rotating as I work my way around here. Okay, and so what we're doing is we're just catching this edge, and as we do that, it holds it down so it doesn't flip up. We don't want to stitch over here because as a knit, it will want to roll up, and you'll see that edge, which is um, not really what you want. Okay, so we can go along here if you it really nice and smoothly. Take these pins out as we go. As you can see, I leave those side pins in, these extra ones that I've done. I just leave them there because it's easier, um, and then I can take it out when I'm done. I've also found that sometimes it's easier if I have messed up. So when I was learning, I would leave them in there so that I could repin it when I was done because I would have messed up something along the way. Um, it's just what we do when we're learning. Okay, so we're just gonna keep on going around here. Keep it nice and easy. Um, the, the rose petal I like a lot because it comes over fairly often that you can sort of keep an eye on it. Um, 
So some of the more luxurious cuddles have a thicker pile and it's a little bit harder to see and you'll need to use your stiletto more. But for this, this one I think is a really great uh, sort of beginner one to use because you can, you can eyeball it as you go. All right, so I'm just gonna come back around and what I do is I just stitch over this just a little bit where I started and then my back stitch and then I'm gonna cut my thread. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna go over to the table. All right, so now I've got it, and I'm just gonna take all of my pins out. So I have a whole bunch of machine, or pins still at the machine, but the ones that are all along this edge, I'm just gonna take these guys out. Okay, so I take these out, and then basically we're done. That was it, super duper easy. Um, <laughs> it's the, uh, the quickest, easiest project, I swear. Um, so then I've got my little blanket. I'm going to uh, trim my thread where I started here. I've got one on the back, I do. Okay, and the thing that I want you to note about this is that this is the gray thread, but you can't see it in here. Um, you can see just a little bit maybe, and I promise that when you take this and you wash it and all of these get fluffed back up, all of that just goes away and you won't even see the seam at all. It's kind of magical. Um, on the front is the same sort of thing and this is gonna get all fluffed up when you wash it. So I always recommend that you make a project and then you throw it in the wash and it'll help bring all those fibers back up, get rid of any loose fibers, and then get rid of any chemicals that were in the fabric from the process of it being made. Um, so once we've gotten this done, you have a cute little blanket, super duper easy, okay, adorable. Um, let me show you some other variations, all right? Because this is so easy, you're gonna to wanna to make a dozen of them, I swear. Um, so this is a uh, this is the one with the catacorn that I did. Super duper cute. And this one I did with the, um, the serpentine, you can see, okay? So this one I did it right along the edge. If you're gonna use a cuddle three, I recommend that you use a serpentine stitch along the edge rather than a zigzag because the zigzags show so much. Um, all of the stitches show on your cuddle three. So if you do a decorative stitch, and it's not quite perfect, people won't notice. But if you do a zigzag and it's not quite evenly stitched as you go, it's noticeable. So it's one of those ways that we can sort of hide, hide our mistakes in there. Uh, so we have the serpentine here, and then you can see up here I did a serpentine just to finish it off. I think it makes that edge look much nicer when it's sharp like this. So I serpentined along the edge here. And for the same reason, I did a serpentine and not a straight stitch. And then this one you can see, I did a serpentine um, right along the edge. So it sort of ends up doing a little bit of a, a ruffle, a scallop sort of thing. Um, so it really just depends on what you want. This one is actually done with the gray thread as well. And you can't see it, you can just see the stitching. But this is why quilting with cuddle is amazing because you can see all those stitches. Okay, so let me show you another one. So this is one that we did with our twinkle toes, which is adorable. So this is a larger blanket and you can see it's got a much wider um, border to it. And it's the same thing, I stitched it with gray. All of these are stuck down in here right now, but once that gets washed and these pull up, it will end up hiding all of those stitches really beautifully. Okay, super duper easy and absolutely beautiful. So this is one of our hides on the back, which is a gorgeous one for using on the back of these quilts. I love it. And this is another one that we have. So we have, you know, kids prints, adults prints, whichever one that you are, uh, whatever look you're going for, that's what we can do. Okay, so we've got this one is just a really pretty floral that it also has, um, has a hide print on the back or a hide um, cuddle on the back, Lux cuddle. Um, before we end, what was the, oh, I know what it was. I was like, there was something else I wanted to show you. So let me grab my camera really fast and I'll show you how I do the um, top stitching on the Bernina, okay? Because it looks slightly different. So if you have a regular walking foot, I want you to see that too. Okay, so let me get you on this machine real fast. All right, so now we've got, a, we're over here. So what I've got here, so now we're on this machine. Get you lined up. Okay, 
So we've got my zigzag going. It's the same thing here. I've got a five and a five, and um, I'm just showing you how it works here. So this is um, the same rose cuddle. This is with the catacorn, super cute. And I'm just gonna zigzag right along that edge, but I want you to see how it works with just a regular walking foot, is that basically what I'm doing is I'm getting this raw edge lined up right along that inside, the inside of the toe right there. Okay, so let's give it a try. I'll show you how easy that is. Okay, so I'm just gonna zigzag this down, keep an eye on that raw edge again, take the pin out when I get there, and keep on stitching. Okay, and really super duper easy. You can see how simple this is. If you are doing this on a larger quilt, so if you wanted to do like the 54 inch or a 45 or whatever, what I would do um, in the center is that you can go back and you can zigzag or um, straight stitch a square. So I'm gonna do that same thing and come and back stitch here. Um, so you can put a little square in the middle of it. You can also go and uh, you could stitch around one of the motifs. So here's my little catacorn one. Take these pins out. Okay, super duper cute. I love this guy. Um, but these are really easy and you can see with the with the rose cuddle we don't need to do those edges we don't do the top stitching over there i just leave it it's totally fine um so we just have it so it's a regular one um but if you were going to do a large one you could actually go and you could quilt around this if you wanted to to hold it together in different places so when you're doing a very large quilt it's important that they sort of hold together a lot of times with the bigger ones it doesn't seem to make any difference and we often don't we don't actually stitch them together most of the time for our demo ones but if you are giving it to a kid who's going to be really rough and tumble with it might be a good idea but i've never really had um a super need for it so it's something you can do you can add a little quilting to it it's very nice we don't put batting into these so there's no reason to quilt it otherwise than to just hold it together a little bit um, but they're really adorable little blankets super duper super duper easy um, I really hope that you will give this one a try uh, because it's just it's just a fun little one to make um, like I said start with the 17 incher He's easy enough to make. You saw it took me, I don't know, 10 minutes to do that. Um, it'll take you just as long as it does to cut it out as it does to make the thing, I swear. Um, they're super duper simple. We have the pattern on our website. So like I said, go to shannonfabrics.com uh, and go to our free patterns. We have that and lots more. You could also find it on Facebook. We'll have a, we'll have a link to the pattern there. Uh, download for the PDF as well. And um, if you have any uh, other ideas on what you would love to do, I'd love to see what your combos are. So you could post those in the comments. Go find our fabrics over at shannonfabrics.com and show me what you'd put together. Um, I'd love to see the combos. There's so many that you can do that the choices are really sort of unlimited. I love them. So uh, come back next week. We'll be here. Um, I'm really excited to come back. We're going to be doing our binding with Cuddle next week. So if you have worked on a quilt before and you have wanted to do some binding, that would be, this will be a great one for you. You. we're also going to show you how to do it with just two pieces of cuddle that we're just going to bind those it makes a super duper easy blanket that we're basically going to have the two pieces of cuddle bind the edge i'll show you how to do it so if you've bought a kit this will be a great time for you to watch that and figure out how to do the binding um, and also just to make another easy project so uh, let me know how uh, your blankets turn out i'd love to see pictures of it too by next week so you can post them to our facebook page or uh, tag us on instagram because we're over there too so thank you very much for coming i hope that this uh, was as fun for you as it was for me this is a great project and i look forward to working with you lots more thank you for coming bye bye thanks to our vendor partners who make such great products to make sewing with Cuddle Minky and Embrace Double Gauze, so very easy. Until next time, happy sewing.